Chapter 14 Older Adults People who are 65 years old are in the lower boundary for what is considered old age, in both demographics and social policy within the United States. However, many older adults consider themselves to be middle age well into their seventh decade. Chronological age often has little relation to the reality of aging for an older adult. Each person ages in his or her own way. Every older adult is unique, and as a nurse you need to approach each as an individual. America is aging. The number of older adults in the United States is growing, both absolutely and as a proportion of the total population. There has been a 21% increase in the older adult population since 2002. Part of this increase is caused by the increase of the average lifespan, the aging of the baby boom generation, and the growth of the population segment older than 85 years of age. Contribute to the projected increase in the number of older adults. When caring for this group of patients, nurses must consider cultural, ethnic, and racial diversity. The challenge is to gain new knowledge and skills to provide culturally sensitive and linguistically appropriate care. Variability among older adults. Most older adults are active and involved members of their communities, and thus live in non-institutional settings, but, there is a smaller number that have lost the ability to care for themselves, are confused or withdrawn, and are, are unable to make decisions concerning their needs, therefore, they receive care in the institutional setting, aging does not inevitably lead to disability and dependence. Most older people remain functionally independent despite the increasing prevalence of chronic disease. Nursing assessment provides valuable clues to the effects of a disease or illness on a patient's functional status. When you assess older adults, you will need to identify their strengths, weaknesses, and abilities when developing a plan of care. The physical and psychosocial aspects of aging are closely related. A reduced ability to respond to stress, the experience of multiple losses, and the physical changes associated with normal aging combined to place people at high risk for illness and functional deterioration. Do not assume that all older adults have signs, symptoms, or behaviors representing disease and decline or that these are the only factors you need to assess. You also need to identify an older adult's strengths and abilities during the assessment and encourage independence as an integral part of your plan of care. When healthcare providers hold negative stereotypes about aging, their actions often negatively affect the quality of patient care. Nursing care of older adults poses special challenges because of great variation in their physiological, cognitive, and psychosocial health. As nurses, you should not be susceptible to myths and stereotypes. Some people equate worth with productivity. Therefore, they think that older adults become worthless after they leave the workforce. Others consider their knowledge and experience too outdated to have any current value. Ageism typically undermines the self-confidence of older adults, limits their access to care, and distorts caregivers' understanding of the uniqueness of each older adult. Always promote a positive perception regarding the aging process when you establish therapeutic relationships and show respect to older adults. Older adults are a significant proportion of the consumer economy, as voters and activists in various issues. They have a major influence in the formation of public policy. Their participation adds a unique perspective on social, economic, and technological issues, because they have experienced almost a century of developments. Even though older adults may be slower and may have troubles with vision, hearing, and dexterity, when you plan care, you will take into account their positive attributes. Although reduced energy and endurance sometimes affect the process of learning, older adults are lifelong learners. Older adults have been through the depression, wars, and changes in health care throughout their lives. 
Living through all of these events and changes, they have stories and examples of coping with change to share. Case Study Sam is a nursing student assigned to a long-term care facility for his clinical rotation. Because Sam is a first-semester nursing student, he is assigned to only one patient, Mr. Bob Calder. Mr. Calder, an 87-year-old Caucasian, has a reputation of being quite stubborn and non-compliant with his plan of care. Before his shift begins, Sam pokes his head into Mr. Calder's room to say a quick hello and to introduce himself. He informs Mr. Calder that he will return shortly to perform an assessment and give Mr. Calder his morning medication. Do you think it was a good idea that Sam gave Mr. Calder advance notice of the assessment he plans to perform? Nurses must assess their own attitude toward older adults and their aging. Positive attitudes are based in part on a realistic portrayal of the characteristics and health care needs of older adults. It is critical for you to respect older adults and actively involve them in care decisions and activities. In the past, institutional settings, such as hospitals and nursing centers, often treated older adults as objects rather than independent, dignified people. The time has come for nurses to recognize and address ageism by questioning prevailing negative attitudes and stereotypes and reinforcing the realities of aging as they care for older adults in all care settings. Development tasks for the older adult How older adults adjust to the changes of aging is highly individualized. Be sensitive to the effect of losses on older adults and their families and be prepared to offer support. Older adults need to adjust to the physical changes that accompany aging. Some older adults, including both men and women, find it difficult to accept aging. Acceptance of personal aging does not mean retreat into inactivity, but it does require a realistic review of strengths and limitations. The need to cope with retirement residence change, and death of loved ones, all require an extended period of adjustment, during which assistance and support from health care professionals, friends, and family members is necessary. Deaths represent both losses and reminders of personal mortality. Coming to terms with them is often difficult. Nursing can provide support by helping older adults through the grieving process. A variety of issues sometimes occur including control of decision-making, dependence, conflict, guilt, and loss. How these issues surface in situations and how they are resolved depend in part on the past relationship between the older adult and their adult children. As adult children and aging parents negotiate the aspects of changing roles, nurses are in the position to act as counselors for the entire family. Helping older adults maintain their quality of life is often a priority. What defines quality of life is unique for each person. Please review Box 14-1. Developmental Tasks for Older Adults. As a supplement this PowerPoint. Case Study Continued. Upon Sam's return to Mr. Calder's room. He asks Mr. Calder what activities he enjoys participating in at the nursing home. Mr. Calder informs Sam that he is an avid baseball fan and never misses a televised game of his favorite team. During Sam's assessment of Mr. Calder, they talk about baseball, which makes Mr. Calder compliant with Sam's assessment and health history questions. Community-based and institutional health care services. Nurses encounter older adult patients in a wide variety of community and institutional health care settings such as private homes, apartments, retirement communities, adult day care centers, assisted living facilities, and nursing centers. Nurses help older adults and their families by providing information and answering questions as they make choices among care options. 
Your assistance is especially valuable when patients and families need to make decisions about moving to a nursing center. Some family caregivers consider nursing center placement when in-home care becomes increasingly difficult, or when recovery from hospitalization requires more assistance than the family is able to provide. Although the decision to enter a nursing center is never final, and a nursing center resident is sometimes discharged to home or another less acute facility, many older adults may view the nursing center as their final residence. The best way to evaluate the quality of a nursing center in a community is for the patient and family to visit that facility and inspect it personally. The Medicare website is an excellent resource for information about the quality rating of a nursing center based on health inspections, staffing, and quality measures of the facility. It offers a checklist. Please review Box 14 2. Focus on older adults. Selection of a nursing center or home. As a supplement to this PowerPoint. Assessing the needs of the older adult. Obtaining a complete assessment takes time, as older adults have lived longer which is reflective in their medical history. Because of this, nurses should allow rest periods for the older adult. Be sure to review prescribed and over-the-counter medications, and take into account vision and hearing constraints. If an older adult is unable to understand your visual or auditory cues, your assessment data will likely be inaccurate or misleading, thus leading you to incorrectly conclude that the older adult is confused. When a person has a hearing impairment, speak directly to the patient in clear, low-pitched tones and move to a quiet area to reduce background noise. When caring for people with visual impairments, sit or stand at eye level and face them. Always encourage the use of assistive devices such as glasses and hearing aids. Memory deficits, if present, affect the accuracy and completeness of your assessment. Therefore you may need to enlist help of a family member or caregiver. The additional person supplements information with the consent of the older adult, but the older adult remains the primary source of the interview. In order to provide culturally competent care, you must recognize and process your own biases related to ageism, social norms, and racism, as it affects your ability to provide culturally competent care. Remember some changes are related to the aging process, while other changes are related to a disease process. It is important to recognize early indicators of acute illness in older adults. Note changes in mental status, occurrence and reason for falls. Dehydration, decrease in appetite, loss of function, dizziness, and incontinence because these symptoms are not frequently present in younger adults. Mental status changes commonly occur as a result of disease and psychological issues. Falls are complex and often cause injury. You need to investigate every fall carefully to find out if it was the result of environmental causes or the symptom of a new onset illness. Problems with the cardiac, respiratory, musculoskeletal, neurological, urological, and sensory body systems sometimes present with a fall as a chief symptom of an onset condition. Dehydration is common in older adults because of decreased oral intake related to a reduced thirst response, and less free water as a consequence of a decrease in muscle mass. Additionally, Dehydration is also common because the older adult does not drink because they do not want to get up to urinate. Decrease in appetite is a common symptom with the onset of pneumonia, heart failure, and urinary tract infection, thyroid disease, infection, cardiac or pulmonary conditions, metabolic disturbances, and anemia are common causes of functional decline. Nurses play an essential role in early identification, referral, and treatment of health problems. Please review Box 14.3. Examples of altered presentation of illnesses in older adults occurring in various health care settings, as a supplement to this PowerPoint. Physiological Changes 
Older adults' concepts of health generally depend on personal perceptions of functional ability. An initial inspection reveals if eye contact and facial expression are appropriate to the situation and if universal aging changes, such as facial wrinkles, gray hair, loss of body mass in the extremities, and increase of body mass in the trunk, are present. Please review Table 14-1, Common Physiological Changes with Aging at a Glance, as a supplement to this PowerPoint. With aging the skin loses resilience and moisture, the epithelial layer thins, and elastic collagen fibers shrink and become rigid. Wrinkles of the face and neck reflect lifelong patterns of muscle activity and facial expressions, the pull of gravity on tissue, and diminished elasticity. Spots and lesions are often present on the skin, smooth, brown, irregularly shaped spots know as age spots or senile and tigo. Initially appear on the backs of the hands and on forearms, small, round, red or brown cherry and geomas occur on the trunk, seborrheic lesions or keratosis appear as irregular, round or oval, brown, watery lesions, years of sun exposure contribute to the aging of the skin and lead to pre-malignant and malignant lesions, rule out these three malignancies related to sun exposure when examining skin lesions. 1. Melanoma, 2. Basal cell carcinoma, and 3. Squamous cell carcinoma. The facial features of an older adult sometimes become more pronounced from loss of subcutaneous fat and skin elasticity, appear asymmetrical because of missing teeth or improperly fitting dentures, visual acuity declines with age. This is often the result of retinal damage, reduced pupil size development of opacities in the lens, or loss of lens elasticity, presbyopia is common, glare effects increase, pupils are smaller and react slower, there is difficulty with going from bright to dark environments, changes in color vision make it difficult to distinguish between blue and green, eye diseases include cataract, macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy, and retinal detachment. Auditory changes are often subtle. Common change is perspicuousness, which affects the ability to hear high-pitched sounds and conversational speech, is typically bilateral, affecting more men than women. Be sure to inspect the external auditory canal for the presence of cerumen. Salivary secretion is reduced, and taste buds atrophy and lose sensitivity. Health conditions, treatments and our medications often alter taste. It is often a challenge to promote optimal nutrition in an older patient because of the loss of smell and changes in taste. Because of changes in the musculoskeletal system, the configuration of the thorax sometimes changes. Vertebral changes caused by osteoporosis led to dorsal kyphosis. The curvature of the thoracic spine, calcification of the costal cartilage causes decreased mobility of the ribs, the chest wall gradually becomes stiffer, lung expansion decreases, and the patient is less able to cough deeply. If kyphosis or chronic obstructive lung disease is present, breath sounds become distant. The older adult is more susceptible to pneumonia and other bacterial or viral infections. The body tries to compensate for decreased cardiac output by increasing the heart rate during exercise. It takes longer for an older adult's rate to return to baseline. Systolic and or diastolic blood pressures are sometimes abnormally high. Although a common chronic condition, hypertension is not a normal aging change and predisposes older adults to heart failure, stroke, renal failure, coronary heart disease and peripheral vascular disease. Peripheral pulses frequently are still palpable but weaker in lower extremities. As estrogen production diminishes, the milk ducts of the breasts are replaced by fat, making breast tissue less firm. Decreased muscle mass, tone, and elasticity result in smaller breasts in older women. In addition, the breasts sag, 
Gynecomastia, or enlarged breasts in men, is often the result of medication side effects, hormonal changes, or obesity. Both older men and women are at risk of breast cancer. The abdomen increases in size due to an increase in the amount of fatty tissue in the trunk. Because muscle tone and elasticity decrease, it also becomes more protuberant. Gastrointestinal function changes include a slowing of peristalsis and alterations in secretions. Alterations in the lower gastrointestinal tract led to constipation, flatulence, or diarrhea. Hormonal changes include reduced estrogen and progesterone levels in women, causing vaginal mucosa dryness, irritation and pain with intercourse, and decreased libido. Men typically experience less firm and shorter acting erections, and less forceful ejaculation. Sexual desires, thoughts, and actions continue throughout all decades of life. Less frequent sexual activity often results from illness, death of a sexual partner, or decreased socialization. Hypertrophy of the prostate gland is frequently seen in older men. Urinary retention, frequency, incontinence, and urinary tract infections also occur. Prostatic hypertrophy results in difficulty initiating voiding and maintaining a urinary stream. Benign prostatic hypertrophy is different from cancer of the prostate. Cancer of the prostate is the second leading cause of cancer death in American men. Urinary incontinence is an abnormal and typically embarrassing condition. Stress incontinence is involuntary release of urine that occurs when they cough, laugh, sneeze or lift an object, this is a result of a weakening of the perineal and bladder muscles. Other types of urinary incontinence are urgency, overflow, functional, and mixed incontinence. The risk factors for urinary incontinence include age, menopause, diabetes, hysterectomy, stroke, and obesity. Muscle strength diminishes in proportion to the decline in muscle mass. Older adults who exercise regularly do not lose as much bone and muscle mass, or muscle tone, as those who are inactive. Osteoporosis is a major public health threat. Postmenopausal women experience a greater rate of bone demineralization than older men. Women who maintain calcium intake throughout life and into menopause have less bone demineralization than women with low calcium intake. Older men with poor nutrition and decreased mobility are also at risk for bone demineralization. Neurotransmitters, chemical substances that enhance or inhibit nerve impulse transmission, change with aging as a result of the decrease in neurons. All voluntary reflexes are slower, and individuals often have less of an ability to respond to multiple stimuli. Sleeping difficulties also occur. Functional changes. Functional status in older adults includes the day-to-day -day activities of daily living, or ADLs, involving activities within physical, psychological, cognitive, and social domains. The fear of becoming dependent is overwhelming for an older adult who is experiencing functional decline as a result of aging. Educate older adults to promote understanding of age-related changes appropriate lifestyle adjustments, and effective coping. Factors that promote the highest level of function include a healthy, well-balanced diet, paced and appropriate activity, regularly scheduled visits with a health care provider, regular participation in meaningful activities, use of stress, management techniques, and avoidance of alcohol, tobacco, or illicit drugs. It may be difficult for older adults to accept the changes that are occurring in all areas of their lives, which in turn have a profound effect on functional status. Changes are usually linked to illness or to disease and degree of chronicity. Performance of ADLs is a sensitive indicator of health or illness. A sudden change in function with ADLs is often a sign of onset of an acute illness or worsening of a chronic illness. When planning and implementing care for older adults, 
you will want to develop interventions aimed at maintaining, restoring, or maximizing their functional status, while maintaining independence and preserving dignity. Occupational and physical therapists are your best resources for a comprehensive assessment. Case study continued. Sam performs his assessment of Mr. Calder. He finds that Mr. Calder has thin skin, decreased saliva production, decreased muscle strength, and widening of the eye lands. Is this considered a normal finding for a patient in Mr. Calder age group? Many physiological changes occur in the elderly, including thinning of the skin, decreased saliva production, and decreased muscle strength. Yellowing, not widening, of the lens of the eye also occurs with age. Cognitive Disorders A common misconception about aging is that cognitive impairments are widespread among older adults. Reduction in the number of brain cells, deposits of lipofuscin and amyloid in cells, and changes in neurotransmitter levels occur in older adults, both with and without cognitive impairment. Symptoms of cognitive impairment, such as disorientation, loss of language skills, Loss of the ability to calculate, and poor judgment, are not normal aging changes and require you to further assess patients for underlying causes. Remember that forgetfulness is an expected symptom of aging, but confusion is not. There are standard assessment forms for determining a patient's mental status, including the Mini Mental State Exam 2, the Mini Cog, and the Clock Drawing Test. Delirium is potentially a reversible cognitive impairment that often has a physiological cause, which can include electrolyte imbalances, untreated pain, infection, cerebral anoxia, hypoglycemia, medication effects, tumors, subdural hematomas, and cerebrovascular infarction or hemorrhage. It may accompany systemic infections, pneumonia, or urinary tract infections. It may also be caused by sensory deprivation or overstimulation, unfamiliar surroundings, sleep deprivation or psychosocial factors such as emotional distress. It is possible for delirium and dementia to occur at the same time. The presence of delirium is a medical emergency and requires prompt assessment and immediate intervention. Dementia is characterized by a gradual, progressive, Irreversible cerebral dysfunction, it interferes with social and occupational activities, and is an umbrella term for many conditions, including Alzheimer's. Assess carefully to rule out the presence of delirium whenever you suspect dementia. Nurses should consider the safety and physical and psychosocial needs of the older adult and the family. Remember to individualize nursing care to enhance quality of life and maximize functional performance by improving cognition, mood, and behavior. Depression is the most common, yet most undetected and untreated. Impairment in older adulthood. Suicide in older adults accounts for 20% of all suicides. Treatment includes medication, psychotherapy, or a combination of both. Electroconvulsant therapy is sometimes used for treatment of resistant depression when medications and psychotherapy do not help. White men, age 85 and older, have the highest suicide rate in the U.S. Please review Box 14-4, Principles for Nursing Care of Adults Who Are Cognitively Impaired, and Table 14-2, Comparison of Clinical Features of Delirium, Dementia, and Depression as a supplement to this PowerPoint. Psychosocial changes revolve around life transitions and loss. The longer we live, the longer we have to cope with losses. Remember that this group makes up a large part of the U.S. population. It is important to assess both the nature of the psychosocial changes that occur in older adults as a result of life transitions and the loss and the adaptations to the changes. During your assessment, 
Ask how an older adult feels about self, self in relation to others, and self as one who is aging, and which coping methods and skills have been beneficial. The psychosocial stresses of retirement are usually related to role changes with a spouse or within the family, and to loss of the work role. Pre-retirement planning is an important advisable task. People who plan in advance for retirement generally have a smoother transition. Retirement also affects the spouse, adult children, and even grandchildren. In the adjustment to retirement, an older adult has to develop a personally meaningful schedule and a supportive social network. Factors that influence a retired person's satisfaction with life are health status and sufficient income. Social isolation can occur voluntarily or involuntarily. The nurse can assess a patient's potential for social isolation by identifying their social network, access to transportation, and willingness and desire to interact with others. Outreach programs are available, including Meals on Wheels, daily telephone calls, and volunteer opportunities. All older adults, whether healthy or frail, need to express their sexual feelings. Sexuality involves love, warmth, sharing, and touching, not just the act of intercourse. Knowing an older adult's sexual needs allows you to incorporate this information into the nursing care plan. Not all nurses feel comfortable counseling older adults about sexual health and intimacy-related needs. Be prepared to refer older adults to an appropriate professional counselor. The extent of an older adult's ability to live independently influences housing choices. The goal of your assessment of a patient's environment is to consider resources that promote independence and functional ability. Assess their activity level financial status, access to public transportation and community activities, environmental hazards, and support systems. When helping patients consider housing, remember to plan for the future. The environment supports or hinders physical and social functioning, enhances or drains energy, and complements or taxes existing physical changes such as vision and hearing. Furniture needs to be comfortable and safe. Older adults have to deal with the death of family, friends, and their spouse. Nurses need to help them cope with loss. They are concerned with being a burden, experiencing suffering, being alone, and the use of life-prolonging measures. Nurses should have knowledge of the grieving process, excellent communication skills, understanding of legal issues and advanced care planning. They should also be familiar with community resources. Awareness of one's own feelings, limitations, and strengths as they relate to care of those confronting death. When assessing these five changes, make sure to also assess older adults' family situation, intimate relationships, past and present occupations, finances, housing, social networks, normal activities, health and wellness, and spirituality. Time for a quick quiz. A nurse who has recently graduated has been assigned to be a primary nurse on a geriatric unit. After completing a review of development and aging, the nurse recalls that changes for the older adult include a, a transition from young adulthood, b the ability of the older adult to achieve sexual arousal, c a time when cognitive performance begins to peak, or Adjusting to decreasing health and physical strength. The answer is D. Older adults have many physiological and psychological changes. It is important for the nurse to know these changes and to be able to distinguish whether changes are normal or abnormal for the older adult. Learning needs for the older adult. Cognitive and sensory changes are challenges for teaching older adults. As you assess the various physical, cognitive, functional and psychosocial problems of older adults, it is important to also assess their associated learning needs, 
If a patient has slow responses or reaction time when performing physical activities, it will be necessary to consider these limitations when teaching new psychomotor skills. Older adults learn new information at a slower rate than younger adults due to a decline in fluid intelligence, which is defined as the reasoning and processing components of learning. In addition, an older adult has difficulty processing multiple bits of information at one moment. During your assessment, carefully consider a patient's learning needs and capability to learn. Addressing the health concerns of the older adult. As the population ages and life expectancy increases, emphasis on health promotion and disease prevention increases. Healthy People 2020 goals include 1. Increase the number of older adults with one or more chronic conditions who report confidence in maintaining their conditions. 2. Reduce the proportion of older adults who have moderate to severe functional limitations. 3. Increase the proportion of older adults with reduced physical or cognitive function who engage in light, moderate, or vigorous leisure term physical activities. 4. Increase the proportion of older adults who receive diabetes self-management benefits. N. 5. Increase the proportion of the healthcare workforce with geriatric certification. The challenges of health promotion and disease prevention for older adults are complex and affect health care providers as well. Previous health care experiences, personal motivation, health beliefs, culture, health literacy, and non-health related factors such as transportation and finances often create barriers for older adults. Barriers for health care providers include beliefs and attitudes about which services and programs to provide, their effectiveness and the lack of consistent guidelines, and absence of a coordinated approach. The nurse's role is to focus interventions on maintaining and promoting patients' function and quality of life. You can empower older adults to make their own health care decisions and realize their optimum level of health, function and quality of life. Educating older adults. Inadequate health literacy disproportionately affects older adults in the United States, causing misunderstanding of health information and subsequent non-adherence. The World Health Organization defines health literacy as the cognitive and social skills that determine the motivation and ability of individuals to gain access to, understand, and use information in ways that promote and maintain good health. A nurse must know how to adapt routine patient education strategies to effectively meet the specific learning needs of elderly patients, retrieving prescriptions and referrals. Selecting providers from a list of names and addresses, calculating when to take multiple medications, interpreting medical terminology, comparing different insurance plans, and sifting through the myriad of health-related information available in magazines, on the internet, and on television, are just a few of the complex thought processes involved in selecting, understanding, and using health related information about medications. Please review Box 14-5, Patient Teaching, Adapting Instruction for Older Adults with Health Literacy Limitations, as a supplement to this PowerPoint. Approximately 80% of adults older than age 65 years have at least one chronic illness. Limitations in ADLs limit the ability to live independently. A strong relationship has been noted between disability status and reported health status. Functional changes include walking, showering and bathing, getting in and out of bed and chair, dressing, toileting, and eating. General preventive measures to recommend to older adults include 1. Participation in screening activities such as blood pressure mammography, pap smears, vision and hearing, and colonoscopy. 2. Regular exercise. 3. Weight reduction if overweight. 4. Eating a low-fat, well-balanced diet. 5. 
moderate alcohol use. 6. Regular dental visits. 7. Smoking cessation. 8. Stress management. 9. Socialization. 10. Good hand washing. 11. Regular checkups with health care providers. And 12. Immunization for seasonal influenza, tetanus, diphtheria and pertussis, shingles, and pneumococcal disease. A key point to remember is that older adults are interested in their health and are capable of taking charge of their lives. Initial screenings establish baseline data that you use to determine wellness, identify health needs, and design health maintenance programs. Following initial screening sessions, share with older adults information on nutrition, exercise, medications, and safety precautions. By providing information about health promotion and self-care, you significantly improve the health and well-being of older adults. Heart disease is the leading cause of death in older adults, followed by cancer, chronic lung disease, and stroke. Common cardiovascular disorders are hypertension and coronary artery disease. Nursing interventions for hypertension and coronary artery disease address weight reduction, exercise, dietary changes, limiting salt and fat intake, stress management, and smoking cessation. Patient teaching also includes information about medication management, blood pressure monitoring, and the symptoms indicating the need for emergency care. Malignant neoplasms are the second most common cause of death among older adults. Nurses educate older adults about early detection, treatment, and cancer risk factors, encourage them to report non-healing skin lesions, unexpected bleeding, change in bowel habits, nagging cough, lump in breast or another part of body, change in a mole, difficulty swallowing, and unexplained weight loss. Nurses need to carefully distinguish between signs of normal aging and signs of pathological conditions. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, is the third leading cause of death in those 65 and older. Tobacco smoke is a key factor in the development and progression of COPD. It is important to provide patients with information about quit smoking programs, teach proper exercise, how to use inhalers, techniques for the removal of mucus from the airways, and exercise training. Cerebrovascular accidents, or CVAs, are the fourth leading cause of death in the United States and occur as brain ischemia or brain hemorrhage. Nursing interventions ranges from teaching older adults about risk reduction strategies to teaching family caregivers about the early warning signs of a stroke and ways to support a patient during recovery and rehabilitation. Cigarette smoking is a risk factor for the four most common causes of death, heart disease, cancer, lung disease, and stroke. If a patient rejects smoking cessation, suggest at least a reduction in smoking, set a quit or reduction date, and a follow-up visit with the older adult to discuss the quit attempt. Studies of alcohol abuse in older adults report two patterns, one, a lifelong pattern of continuous heavy drinking, and, two, a pattern of heavy drinking that begins late in life. The continuum of interventions ranges from simple education about risks, to formalized treatment programs that include pharmacotherapy, psychotherapy, and rehabilitation. Lifelong eating habits and situational factors influence how older adults meet their needs for good nutrition. Situational factors affecting nutrition include access to grocery stores, finances, physical and cognitive capability for food preparation, and a place to store food and prepare meals. Healthy nutrition for older adults includes appropriate caloric intake and limited intake of fat, salt refined sugars, and alcohol. Home-delivered meals are an excellent source of nutrition for older adults. Dental caries, gingivitis, broken or missing teeth, and ill-fitting or missing dentures affect nutritional adequacy. 
cause pain, and led to infection. Help prevent dental and gum disease through education about routine dental care. The primary benefits of exercise include maintaining and strengthening functional ability, and promoting a sense of enhanced well-being. Consult with physical therapists and a patient's health care provider to plan an exercise program that meets physical needs, and is one the patient enjoys. Walking and other low-impact exercises, such as riding a stationary exercise bicycle or water exercises in a swimming pool, protect the musculoskeletal system and joints, stress safety when exercising. Instruct older adults to stop exercising and seek help if they experience chest pain or tightness, shortness of breath, dizziness or lightheadedness, joint pain, or palpitations during exercise. The most common injuries in older adults from falls include fractures of the spine, hip, forearm, leg, ankle, pelvis, upper arm, and hand. Older adults who have fallen will often develop a fear of falling, which, in turn, often causes them to walk less naturally or to limit their activities, leading to reduced mobility and loss of physical fitness. Promote existing sensory function and be sure that patients live in safe environments. Make sure that patients wear assist devices such as a hearing aid or glasses when providing care activities. Pain is not a normal part of healthy aging. It is a symptom and a sensation of distress, alerting a person that something is wrong. Nurses caring for older adults have to advocate for appropriate and effective pain management. The goal of nursing management of pain in older adults is to maximize function and improve quality of life. One of the greatest challenges for older adults is safe medication use. They are at risk for adverse medication effects because of age-related changes in the absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion of drugs, collectively referred to as the process of pharmacokinetics. Medications sometimes interact with one another, adding or negating the effect of another drug. Polypharmacy is also a problem. Managing medications is complex and often becomes overwhelming. Some older adults do not understand instructions, or forget to take them. Quest can be a barrier. Sometimes nurses can work with drug companies, or the patient's insurance company for less cost. Teach an older adult the names of all medications that he or she is taking, when and how to take them, and desirable and undesirable effects. Carefully monitor patients who are on medications to manage confusion. Please review Box 14-6, Risk Factors for Falls in Older Adults, and Box 14-7, Evidence-Based Practice, Polypharmacy in Older Adults, as a supplement to this PowerPoint. Case Study Continued Sam notices that Mr. Calder's face is gaunt and drawn in appearance. Sam then remembers that thinning of the face in the elderly is caused by loss of subcutaneous fat and skin elasticity. Some interventions are more crucial for older adults experiencing social isolation, cognitive impairment or stresses related to retirement, relocation, or approaching death. Elder mistreatment is defined as an intentional action that causes harm, or creates serious risk of harm, to a vulnerable elder by a caregiver or other person who is in a trust relationship to the elder. Types of elder mistreatment include physical abuse, emotional abuse, financial exploitation, sexual abuse, neglect, whether intentional or unintentional, and abandonment. Screen for elder mistreatment and assess for physical and emotional signs of abuse. Complete the interview and assessment privately away from the caregiver. Some states require mandatory reporting. Therapeutic communication skills enable you to perceive and respect the older adult's uniqueness and health care expectations. Attentive nurses provide care in a timely fashion, meeting at patients' expressed or unexpressed needs. A caring nurse expresses attitudes of concern, kindness, and compassion. 
Knowledgeable nurses not only demonstrate procedural competence, but also recognize needs and relay information skillfully. Touch provides sensory stimulation, induces relaxation, provides physical and emotional comfort, orients the person to reality, shows warmth, and communicates interest. Reality orientation is a communication technique that makes an older adult more aware of time, place, and person. The purposes of reality orientation include restoring a sense of reality, improving the level of awareness, promoting socialization, elevating independent functioning, minimizing confusion, disorientation, and physical regression. The key elements of reality orientation include frequent reminders of person, place, and time, the use of familiar environmental aids such as clocks, calendars, and personal belongings, and stability of the environment, routine, and staff. Validation therapy is an alternative approach to communication with a confused older adult. Reality orientation insists that the confused older adult agree with your statements of time, place, and person. On the other hand, validation therapy accepts the description of time and place as stated by the confused older adult. Validation does not involve reinforcing the older adult's misperceptions, but it reflects sensitivity to hidden meanings in statements and behaviors, reminiscence, or recalling the past uses the recollection of the past to bring meaning and understanding to the present, and to resolve current conflicts. It helps with coping. During the assessment process, use reminiscence to assess self-esteem, cognitive function, emotional stability, unresolved conflicts, coping ability, and expectations for the future. The way that older adults present themselves influences body image and feelings of isolation. Consequences of illness and aging that threaten an older adult's body image include invasive diagnostic procedures, pain, surgery, loss of sensation in a body part, skin changes, and incontinence. Nurses can influence the older adult's appearance by helping with grooming and hygiene. Please review Table 14-3, Elder Mistreatment, Types, Descriptions, and Examples as a supplement to this PowerPoint. Acute care settings pose risks for adverse event and the older adult. Pay special attention to the basic needs of comfort, safety, nutrition, hydration, and skin integrity. To promote independence and a sense of dignity, you need to include the patient in his or her care. However, you also need to be firm with these patients to ensure that their basic needs are met, and that no decline in their health status occurs owing to hospitalization. The risk for delirium increases when hospitalized older adults experience immobilization, sleep deprivation, infection, dehydration, pain, sensory impairment, drug interactions, anesthesia, and hypoxia. Older adults are at greater risk for dehydration and malnutrition during hospitalization because of standard procedures, such as limiting food and fluids in preparation for diagnostic tests and medications that decrease appetite. Increased risk for healthcare-associated infections in older adults is associated with age-related reductions in immune system responses. Causes of incontinence include delirium untreated urinary tract infection, medications, restricted mobility or need for assistance to get to the bathroom, and constipation or stool impaction, the increased risk for skin breakdown, and the development of pressure ulcers, is related to changes in aging skin into situations that occur in the acute care setting, such as immobility, incontinence, and malnutrition the cause of a fall is typically multifactorial and composed of intrinsic or extrinsic factors. Please review Box 14-6, Risk Factors for Falls in Older Adults, as a supplement to this PowerPoint. Case Study Continued
Mr. Calder's blood pressure is 162 over 92. Do you think Mr. Calder's hypertension is a normal sign of aging? The answer is no. Hypertension is not a normal sign of aging, although it is a common chronic condition that predisposes older adults to heart failure, stroke, renal failure, coronary heart disease, and peripheral vascular disease. Time for a quick quiz. Which of the following might be a cause of stress for the older adult? Select all that apply. A. Financial security. B. Planned retirement. C. Housing. D. Adjusting to decreasing health and physical strength. The answers are A, C, and D. Stressful situations for older adults include making sure they have enough money to provide for all their needs, selecting the correct housing to ensure future needs, especially if the older adult's mobility is limited, and adjusting to decreasing health and physical strength. Restorative care refers to two types of ongoing care. 1. The recovery from acute illness or surgery that began in the acute care setting. And 2. Support of chronic conditions that affect day-to-day -day functioning. Both types of restorative care take place in private homes and long-term care settings. Pay attention to the exercise regimen, wound care regimen, medication schedules vital signs monitoring, and blood glucose monitoring, include the patient and family members in the care. The aim is to stabilize their condition while promoting health and independence. Restorative nursing interventions stabilize chronic conditions, promote health, and promote independence in basic and instrumental activities of daily living. Beyond the basic ADLs, you need to support an older adult's ability to perform instrumental ADL such as using a telephone, doing laundry, cleaning the home or apartment, and driving an automobile. Restorative care measures focus on activities that allow older adults to remain functional within their living environments. Collaborate with an older adult to establish priorities of care and patient goals. Determine expected outcomes and select appropriate interventions. Thoughtful assessment and planning led to goals of care that consider the influence of normal aging changes, facilitate an optimal level of comfort and coping, and promote independence in self-care activities.